and we've made some progress from the days of just putting on some like lidocaine gel, which doesn't taste very good either. What are the options clinically? What medications and topical uh, treatments are available that are more effective to help patients on two levels? One, prevention, and then if you already have mucositis, what can we do to help with the pain and healing? Unfortunately, not many. There, uh, if we look at those uh, interventions that are based um, in evidence, there aren't many. There are only a couple, and they're very specific to particular agents. That's not to say that there aren't things out there, but as particularly at the Oncology Nursing Society, we're looking at our putting evidence into practice cards, our PEP cards, and we really look at very good evidence before we make recommendations uh, to patients. If we take that into consideration, there are only a couple of uh, medications right now very specific to particular chemotherapies. One of those is what's called cryotherapy. So. 30 minutes before a patient is to receive 5-FU or fluorouracil, they put ice in their mouth uh, and they uh, let the ice stay in their mouth. And this uh, decreases a little bit of the circulation to the cells of the mouth um, and then 30 minutes after. So for 5-FU, um, we recommend cryo uh, cryotherapy. Uh, there is a medication called palifermin that is used uh, for very high dose uh, chemotherapy and radiation. And unfortunately, other than those two medications, right now we do not have the exact uh, interventions. We are working hard to, through uh, clinical research, trying to find more uh, interventions that actually help because I think now that we, I think we have nausea under control, I think this is the most significant um, symptom for patients who are being treated. Is there a difference that you see in patients that are receiving, uh, let's say, uh, chemotherapies that have the tendency to be very neutropenic, resulting in this lowered white count? If they are treated with one of the drugs to boost their white cells, uh, right after they've received their chemotherapy, do you see less of an incidence of mucositis in these it's patients? Hard to say. I mean, I think that there is some correlation between when a patient naders and when. I mean, that's really when those cells are recovering, both the white cells and the epithelial cells of the mouth. Now, what I did want to mention is the good news. Uh, for these patients is, is the research really supports that the patients who are undergoing either radiation or chemotherapy that do a good job of keeping their mouth clean during treatment, uh, that's very important and it's almost a removal of damaged cells and cytokines in the mouth. So we certainly recommend the use of a soft toothbrush, flossing if they have been flossing before, and then um, a rinse of a normal saline to really help keep their um, mouth or oral cavity I'm clean. Really, I'm, glad I'm really, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I was, I was going to ask you about that because also before one starts treatment, it's just such a great idea to go to the dentist to make sure that you're not dealing with anything that could become an issue once you're on treatment. And there's a very simple, uh, a product I remember because alcohol, if you use mouthwashes uh, right. with alcohol, they can burn a little bit. But over the counter, so many patients can buy just at the local drugstore uh, a biotin mouthwash is without um, any alcohol in it. And you don't need a prescription. But I do remember fiercely always, you know, not only brushing my teeth, as you said, with a soft toothbrush, but rinsing my mouth. Everything you can do to minimize the risk of infection and complication. And you bring up a really good point, and I, I think it's, um, the research tells us that about 80% of Americans have some form of periodontal disease. And so if your treatment allows it to be able to see a dentist um, prior to beginning treatment and make sure that there are no uh, underlying problems that um, could create problems. The other thing that you're mentioning is there are several things that are over, over the counter and we are challenged as I've said with having something that works. There are other uh, mouthwashes over the counter that probably are effective but we really need some more um, 
randomized clinical trial where we have a nice size population or sample so that we can test these and because I don't feel comfortable making a recommendation for something that I don't know is going to be effective or if it's safe. Right, and if you rinse your mouth and unfortunately it has alcohol in it and you have an open sore, you're going to be reluctant to rinse your mouth again. So the rinsing is so important. But, we, but that's one of the things that we can say without doubt, keeping your mouth clean, and it's very simply using a soft toothbrush, floss if you're flossing, and rinsing, moving the, uh, and it's normal saline. Moving, uh, you don't need to use any, anything that obviously alcohol is going to sting, just think like putting orange juice in your mouth if you have a canker sore. So that is something that we really can do for these patients is to recommend good oral care.